Welcome to another episode of Discover Rhode Island, a show that features the cities and towns in the great state of Rhode Island. I'm your host, Al Cerrone, and today we're in Cranston, a city that's got it all. Urban, agricultural, coastline, and lots of businesses. You name it, Cranston's got it. Coming up on today's episode, we'll sit down with the mayor of Cranston, explore the historic roads on the Patuxent, visit a shop with fashionable prescription eyewear, find out what happens to your produce before it even hits the stores, learn how to plan your perfect wedding, and discover where to groom and pamper your pet. Did you know that the city of Cranston has more square miles than the city of Providence? And Cranston is the third most populated city in the state of Rhode Island. Let's learn a little bit more about the city of Cranston with Mayor Alan Funk. Mayor, thank you for being on the show. Al, welcome to the great city of Cranston where it's a great place to live, work, and play. And I'm proud to be its mayor. Speaking about being a great city, I read recently that Cranston was rated one of the top 50 cities to live in. Absolutely, and I'm so proud of that fact. In fact, it was just last year, uh, 2014, that 24-7 Wall Street rated Cranston the 36th best place to live in America. And I'm so proud of that distinction. They took a look at you know, all the things that we had to offer, the great restaurants, the great amenities that we have, the great businesses, you know, how safe our streets are, and rated us number 36 in the country, and we're shooting to go higher. Well, to get a, an accolade like that, I would think that living, working, and recreational has to be encompassed. Well, we've got a great business environment, and that's been one of the hallmarks of my administration when we first got into office, making it more easy for businesses to be here. You know, taking care of the existing business owners, and it's home to many great businesses. Take a look at Chapel View. It's the worldwide headquarters for Alex and Ani, and they're selling their jewelry not only just in Rhode Island, across our country, but worldwide to citizens employing uh, over a thousand people right in our city of Cranston. And it's also home to many wonderful institutions and a great restaurants. It's a happening place. And shopping malls. We've got some great outdoor malls. Absolutely. It's home to Garden City Center. And that's one of the areas that I really focus on working with the new management company and owners when I first got into office, fixing it up, giving it a little facelift. And you're seeing some you know, one-of-a-kind national retailers that are there, some great restaurants that are in there. And it's drawing a lot of people from not only our community, but outside uh, not only uh, Cranston, but outside the state to come here to shop and to eat. Mayor, being here in City Hall, I couldn't help but notice you have an economic development department. Absolutely. And their priority, and my administration's priority, is every business owner that's here or wants to come here. And everyone that comes in, whether they want to start a business or expand their business, is going to be met with this little concierge team that will walk them through the process so that they can get through uh, all the government departments and make sure that they can open up as quick as possible or put a shovel in the ground on their expansion um, as soon as possible. And that's been a priority from day one of my administration. It's going to keep going on that so way. So to eliminate some of the layers of red tape when you want to get into business that everyone talks about and making businesses feel welcomed and appreciated. Absolutely. You know, making them feel welcome, making them feel like they have a partner at City Hall to ensure that we're going to be there with them and provide the services that we can to ensure that those businesses can thrive and prosper. Businesses create jobs and jobs create tax revenue and we know that cities need that revenue to take care of the folks and the streets and the roads and the schools. It's all about the jobs and that's been my main focus since I took over in day one and what I love about Cranston because we've got a lot happening and we're adding more jobs every single day and we're doing whatever we can to help get people back to work. So we talked about the work now the living. With all the square mileage in Cranston, it just seems that there's a lot more than just homes and businesses. You've got farms. Ah, it's unbelievable. And this is what I love about being in Cranston. You take a look on the eastern side, Nedgewood. You've got the Narragansett Bay 
beautiful waterways that's home to the Edgewood Yacht Club and the Rhode Island Yacht Club, and a beautiful little historic Patuxent Village that's there, to going up to the western side, you've got farmlands that you know are home to Confrida Farms and the great hay rides. Oh, I went on the haunted hay ride. Absolutely, you know, I did too. And you know, it, it provides a lot of fun. And there's so many different things that are going on in Cranston that even the city offers. You know, we've got a great skating rink that has some free skate for a lot of our youths that are there to home to a lot of hockey games, to even Cranston Stadium where, you know, everyone remembers Thanksgiving Day where Cranston East plays Cranston West and it's filled to the brim with people coming back, walking there, uh, and, you know, recreating a lot of good memories. Cranston, rated one of the 50 best cities in the U.S. Living well, working well, playing well. From farmland to coastline, Cranston has it all. Here's another fun fact about the city of Cranston. We're here at Roads on the Patuxent, presented by Russell Marin Fine Catering, and I'm sitting with Maggie, general manager of this historic building. Maggie, this really is a hidden gem, but tell me, what's the buzz going on now? So Rhodes is actually going to be celebrating its 100 year anniversary this year. But where does 1875 come in? The property dates back to 1875 in the original gazebo that's up the street, but this structure was built in 1915. Now the name, Rhodes on the Patuxent, I always thought that had something to do with Rhode Island. No, it actually has to do with the original founder, Thomas Rhodes, who is from a predominant family in the Patuxent Village. They actually originally started um, doing a clam bake facility and also rented flatbed boats out on the Patuxent River. Aha, uh -huh, and that explains why you're right on the Patuxent River. And it really is a beautiful setting, it is. by the way. Now, when you come into the lobby, you're a little bit overpowered, and I can't get over how meticulously preserved this building is for 100 years old. I mean, is a lot of it original? It is. A lot of it is original to the building, and they did a great job preserving everything over the years. The floors are actually original as well, so they're 100 years old. Now, I couldn't help notice that mural, which goes the whole length of the bar. It is. Yep, it's a focal point as you walk in, and it actually depicts Narragansett Bay 100 years ago. What about that little trap door that I see right adjacent to the mural? So the trap door is actually rumored during Prohibition that it may have been a lookout tower for the guests to sort of see if anyone was coming down the road. Wow, I notice a lot of balconies as you walk around. Now, are those balconies functional? They are, yes, so we do use them for some of our larger events. On our bottom floor, we can have a 1,000 guests, um, and then to utilize the whole facility, we can seat up to 1,500. So upstairs would be full service? It would, yeah. And what if you wanted to have an event that didn't require a sit-down dinner? Can you hold more? You can. So for our public events, we have a capacity of up to 2,000. That's impressive. Now, I know that there are many venues in Rhode Island that can hold 1,000 or two people, but I don't know of any with the charm, the history, and the personality of Rhodes on the Patuxent. So why don't we take a walk around into the ballroom and meet with Jess, who will plan your next event. So this is the ballroom. This is where it all happens. Dancing, bands, and fine food. Jess, Rhodes on the Patuxent, but presented by Russell Marin Fine Catering. How do those two fit? Well, Lawrence took over management of the property in 2010. Um, being a caterer of food is really our priority, but we're also in charge of managing this beautiful historic venue, so it really is the best of both worlds. Now, is the food prepared somewhere else and brought here on a truck, or do they do it right here? Everything is made on site, and our staff actually works in teams of two to serve every table. We don't even use plate covers because presentation and quality is very important to us. So if your client requests white glove service, they get it? Absolutely. Now, what kind of food? Really, we can do a, a, a large variety being a caterer. Um, this room is really customizable because it's such a blank canvas, so we do many different types of themed events here, so we're able to really create the menus to match these events. Recently, we actually had a hospital gala that did a Soho theme, so we actually had, it felt like you were on the cobblestone streets of New York here. Oh, cool. It was very cool. Another event we did for a local nonprofit was a African safari. And it was a very high-end event, but they, they literally brought in tapestries and you felt like you were in the jungle in here. Now, Jess, I was speaking with Maggie earlier in the lobby and we were talking about some of the originals. What about in here? 
What are the originals? Well, obviously the floors in here are original also. Um, we also have the flag that is behind us that is original to the building. What's um, the story behind that? Actually, it's kind of a really cute story. So it's said that back when we used to hold military balls here, that the single ladies would stand under the flag and the uh, military men used to go over and ask them to dance. It kind of signified that they were ready to mingle. Oh, how romantic. Well, now we know all about the history of Rhodes and the fact that this building's got charm, personality, we got great food, and you can customize any event depending on what the client wants, what's left. Um, one of the key features I think is one of the most special is the fact that we offer exclusivity. So we're only open for one event at a time. You know, we're not a club or a hotel where there's other people mingling around the building. So we're here literally just for you and your guests. So it's a really personalized, individual experience for each event. And that makes the client special. Absolutely. If you want your event to be special, come to Roads on the Patuxent because the staff here will make your event anything you want it to be. If you're looking for that special touch, from the eye exam right to the eyewear, then Bling Eyewear is the place for you. Bling, there's a lot more than meets the eye. I'm sitting here with the owner of Bling, Cesarina. Tell me a little bit about you. I came to this country when I was nine years old. Uh, we came for a better opportunity. Now, what country did you come from? We came from St. Michael, Azores, Portugal. Oh wow, that's a beautiful country. Now, I assume when you came here that you did not speak English. Not a word. My family and I, we all went to uh, night school to learn the English language. Now, how did you get interested in the eyewear business? Well, I had an eye exam and this doctor told me I couldn't have those glasses. Uh, because of my prescription and my sister could. So this was a sibling rivalry where your sister could have glasses that she wanted but you couldn't. It is. My oldest sister, she could get everything she wanted because her prescription wasn't as bad as mine. When, when you get a prescription and you get disappointed because you finally find a frame that you're comfortable with and the doctor or the optician tells you, no, you cannot have it, that, that's disappointing. And um, being stubborn and being the way I am, I did a little research and uh, come to find out there was lens technology out there that he was not using. And uh, I found a doctor that could definitely do my prescription. Wow, that's interesting. So basically, your motivation to get into this business stemmed from, you know, sort of like a bad experience when you were a kid. That's correct. And now you want to make sure that people that come in here can get any kind of frames they want to make themselves look better. That's correct. And feel better, definitely. That's part of you. And it's your staff here is trained to help people pick out glasses that really, really look better on them. Not that they want to sell them glasses, but they want them to leave this store looking better. That is correct. Um, when you come in with your prescription or even see an eye doctor, our main purpose is two things. Have the best lens for, for your prescription and also the frame that fits properly and complements you. You have a doctor on staff. That's correct. Now, is she a pediatrician as well as a geriatrics doctor? That is correct. Okay, so you do the young and the it's not a, so young. Not so young, They're very broad, and she's and, wonderful. And she there's really frames is. and eyewear in the store to fit every age group. That's correct. Sess, I have three kids, so I've been through all the eyeglass issues. So tell me, the children's glasses, they get scratched, the frames break. Are the kids' glasses guaranteed? The kids' glasses are 100% guaranteed. Just please bring those glasses back to us and we will replace them at no charge. Wow, that's very comforting for a parent. Here at Chapel View, lots of stores, so you must get casual shoppers that go in and out, want to look at glasses, try them on. Do you do non-prescription glasses? We do. Glasses are becoming part of your um, accessory and um, people want to change moods or they want to change the looks and we do have a variety of frames that would fit. We have from newborns all the way up to whatever Body Holly style. Now tell me about the Bling name. I think about high style when I hear Bling. It is a catchy name. It's a catchy name and um, Bling to me and, and the way I see it is that Bling is not about being flashy. It's about a little sparkle on your face. There we have it, bling eyewear. See better, look better, feel better. With a little bling. Here's another fun fact about the city of Cranston.
There's a new burger bar in town, Casey's Classic Burger Bar. Serving burgers the old-fashioned way and made with our half-pound custom sirloin blend. Great fries, too, and quarter-pound all-beef hot dogs, house-made potato chips, and homemade sauces for our signature burgers. Enjoy a beer, wine, or a spiked milkshake. Not fast food, just good food, all in a fun atmosphere. Casey's Classic Burger Bar on Route 1 in North Attleboro. Serving up an American classic. Food, a booming industry where restaurants and supermarkets get all the glamour, but what happens to your food before it gets to the local grocer and on your plate? Eastland Foods will tell us all about it. We're here with Tony DeMarco, owner of Eastland Foods. Tony, you've been in business since 1963. I assume your mom and dad? Yep, uh, mom and dad started the business in 1963, the year I was born, actually. My father had some experience with other food businesses, but he was kind of ahead of his time, and he developed the concept of processing fresh vegetables, namely potatoes back then, to deliver to various restaurants and institutions uh, throughout the state and New England. At what point did you get into it? My father had me working at the ripe old age of 9, 10 years old. Child labor. <laughs> Yeah, well, things were a little different back then, so um, it was good. It was a good learning process, developing a, a work, work ethic early in life. You know, obviously when I wasn't in school. And then he unfortunately passed away in 1979, and I was just a... You were a middle teen teenager. I was 15 years old at the time, yes. And so how did you keep it going? Um, well, uh, Mom was persistent on keeping it going, and she wasn't going to let the business fail. So through her efforts and a lot of other family members' efforts, uh, we were able to achieve that. Thank God for mom. Thank God for mom. And she's 82 years old and she's here every day, eight o'clock in the morning. Now, when you grew too big for the business at home, you moved here right. to Cranston. To Cranston. And now here at this facility, you receive the food from the trucks Correct. that bring it in yep. and you process it. Right. One stop right here. One stop. To learn more about this process, let's go speak with the VP and SQF practitioner. You know what that is, Al, right? Of course I do. Now we're here with Dane. Dane, bail me out. What's SQF? SQF stands for Safe Quality Food. It's part of the Global Food Safety Initiative that was developed in 2000 to monitor food safety practices within a processing plant or a distribution plant. What basically happens is, is we're going to track that lot from when we received it all the way through until it arrives at our customer's uh, door. So there are certain control points within the process where there's higher potential for contamination of product. We want to make sure we monitor those uh, processes. So that basically then is a grading system by this organization to tell you just how well you're doing with handling the food. That is correct, that is correct. And on our last uh, SQ Wolf audit, which was uh, last month, we scored a 98 out of 100. Now that we've established that food safety is the top priority with Eastland, let's go into the process. A trailer backs into your docking facility. What happens? First, there's an intensive uh, inspection process before we'll take that into the facility. We first look at seal. Make sure that the, the trailer has a seal and it has not been broken since it was initially loaded. Then we look at temperatures. We look at the temperature of the units. Uh, we look at the temperature of the product. Uh, we do visual inspection of the product. Uh, once we make the determination that we are going to, in fact, accept that product, it's labeled, lauded, and it goes into storage. Right. Okay? And then when production calls for that product, we're gonna take that raw material, whatever raw material is, out of the cooler, we're gonna bring it into the processing area, and we're going to process it. It's gonna be sanitized, it's gonna be washed through our flume system. 
We run it through metal detection to make sure that there aren't any issues as far as foreign material is concerned. If it needs to be peeled, it might need to be cut, sliced, diced. We do a lot of uh, specialty cuts. So if a customer calls up and they want a hand cut, three quarter by two inch by half inch, um, then we'll do that. Then the product is uh, packaged and the product is shipped to the customer. We're able to uh, deliver our product up and down the East Coast and as far uh, west as Ohio. I never realized how food is pampered from the time it comes out of the ground until it gets on your plate. Most people, Al, don't. Unless you're in this industry, you really don't understand the processes that, that take place to ensure uh, that the food that we deliver to our customers uh, is, is safe and is safe to eat. From a family business that started out in a garage in 1963 to a company that distributes food up and down the East Coast, Eastland Foods, right here in Cranston. We're at a company called Hitch, and if you're assuming what I'm assuming, you're absolutely right. They're wedding planners. I'm here with James and Valentina, and they take the word partners to a whole new level. You're more than business partners, you're... We're married. married. Where did you meet? We met at a wedding. Oh my God. <laughs> this is like too good to be true. And you were working at the same wedding? We were. I was the DJ and he was and the photographer. Wow, so you plan wedding services, all kinds of things, from the, from the food, to the entertainment, to the venue. Absolutely. All wow. of the above. Now, do you folks work at the wedding also? Yes. Yes, yeah, I'm the wedding photographer. I've been doing it for 26 years. So you provide photography services. I do. How about video? Yep, we offer that as well. Valentina, what services do you provide at a wedding? I provide wedding planning as well as my DJ services. Aha. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing an article about you. You're a pretty famous DJ. <laughs> Thank you. And Mostly a good one. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I know it. So the husband and wife team that plans the wedding actually works at the wedding. We do. Right. You know, that's got to bring, I would think, a certain comfort zone to a couple coming here because they want this to be forever and ever. And here they are having their wedding planned by a couple that's obviously in love and married. Yep. <laughs> so that must make it so much easier when folks come in to do a wedding because there are so many different things that comprise a really nice wedding. Right. And it's like they could spend forever and ever putting exactly. it all together. And it can be overwhelming. And we, we really get excited each time someone comes in and they want to share their ideas of what they're looking for. So I think uh, our clients really connect with us because we're not just partners, uh, but we genuinely get excited for them. We're excited for their wedding plans, we're excited for them being in love, and it's, it, it's genuine and it speaks for itself, so it goes a long way. I realize that a wedding is the single most important event in someone's life, and they want it to be just right. So when they come in here, they must be kind of nervous, and, and if they come in with a blank slate and they really don't know what they want, where do you start? What do you do? How do you help them? We like to get acquainted with them first and then see where they are in the planning process and which services it is they need from us. So specifically, what services do you offer your clients? We offer event planning, we offer decor and design, up lighting, uh, we offer that. We get photography. <laughs> we offer photography as well, of course, one of the best in Rhode Island. And this jockeying, I suppose, is the best. Yes, truly, yes. And what kind of music do you play? It really varies, it depends on the client. James, yeah. looking around the studio, I see some wonderful photographs Thank you. of weddings. What makes you so successful at that? I would say mostly just making people feel comfortable in front of the camera. Would you agree with that, Valentina? I, I would, I would, I would agree with that. But I think it's just, it's more than that. I think he's got a great personality and uh, people love that. He's able to make his clients laugh and keep feel going. at ease. Keep, keep going, going, okay. Keep going. And uh, he's talented, he's, he, his work is beautiful, like you said, so. Well, combination of a few different things. Well, you're a happy couple and you're very down to earth. And I can't help but feel that your clients would make such a connection with you, knowing that you're married, you're successful. Sure. You've done this a number of years and you're yeah. planning their wedding. That's yes. what we're hoping for. Yes, wow. that's yep. right. And you want it to be happily ever after. Yeah. Right. No doubt. <laughs> so there you have it. James and Valentina can plan some of your wedding or all of it. Getting hitched just got a whole lot easier. Here's another fun fact about the city of Cranston.
we're here at Artistic Pet Grooming Salon, and I'm with Amber, owner and professional dog groomer. Amber, who's our first client? This is Miss Holly. Uh, a Wheaton Terrier? Yes. Very, very intelligent dogs, I understand. My friends have one. Amber, so you've been doing this for a long time. How long has this business been in Cranston? It's been around for at least 30 years. It was started by my fiance's great-great-grandmother. Wow, where did you learn this trade? My mother-in-law. Her and my sister-in-law both taught me over the course of almost five years. So your, your schooling actually was hands-on experience? Yes. Now, I noticed that, that her hair is a little longer as opposed to other dogs, and I know that you get all kinds of dogs here. Yes. And cats, by the way. Yes. Is yes. that true? Yes, it is. Um, her hair will continuously grow to the floor if not maintained. What's the, the difference in your grooming techniques between a short hair dog and a long hair? Well, the short hair dogs don't get a haircut. They just get a de-shed or we, we brush them as much as we can to get as much undercoat out as possible. Okay, so you kind of like thin it out a little. Yeah. And then the longer hair dogs? Well, it depends on what the owner wants. If they want the hair left longer, we do a little trim, or if they want us to take it down short. How often do you have to give a bath to a dog like this? Not too often. At least four to six weeks is, is a good amount. Okay. It's not too much to dry out their skin and not too long apart. Okay, and about how long between haircuts? I say about, haircuts like I was same. getting. <laughs> about the same. Oh, that's nice. So what are we doing to Miss Holly today? Well, Miss Holly's just gonna get a trim. We already brushed her out, took all the knots out, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim around her bottom of her feet and make her nice and neat and then clean up her face so she can see. Now, did she have a bath yet? Yes, she did. Okay, so you do that first. Yep. Well, what do you say we start giving Holly a clip? Sounds good. You ready? Now, Amber, how long does a typical session take? It depends on the size. It can take anywhere from two to three hours, and it can depend on um, what type of haircut they get. That can, that can definitely make a difference. Now, do you think you've groomed just about every kind of dog? Almost. Are they all as well behaved as Holly? Um, not always. I mean, it's, it's not, this is not part of their daily routine, getting a haircut like us. I mean, their idea of a bath is rolling around in the mud. So we know that you do the bath, and we know that you do the trim. Are there any packages available? Yes, we have bath ears, nails, um, which would be specifically for dogs that don't need haircuts. And then we have bath ears, nails, trim, or haircut, which would apply more to Miss Holly. Amber. Artistic pet grooming, what sets you apart from other groomers? Well, our reputation and our love and care for the animals, and the animals just really deserve it. Ah, and it shows. Love and care, that's the important ingredient at Artistic Pet Grooming Salon. Well, we learned a lot about the great city of Cranston, and we had fun doing it. Join us next time on Discover Rhode Island. Ow, less talking, more chopping. I'm beginning to not like squash.